Hi everybody and welcome to an overview of the GUI and interface in ProBuilder version 2.5. As always, make sure and check that you're looking at the latest video by going to ProCore3D.com slash ProBuilder. Uh, so starting in here, there are basically uh, three main parts of the ProBuilder interface to concern yourself with. The main panel here with the tools, the uh, element selection toolbar at the very top, and then the in-scene controls. So first of all, this toolbar on the left, the ProBuilder toolbar, is what you will use for most of the actions in ProBuilder. And to open it up is very simple. Two ways. Simplest is probably to select a ProBuilder object. And in the Inspector, scroll down a little ways, you'll see the Open ProBuilder button. You can click on that to open it up. Uh, if you do not already have a ProBuilder object in the scene, just click on Tools, ProBuilder, and then ProBuilder window, and that will also open it up. This window is much different as a version 2.5, so you might be uh, wondering how this works and what's different. We'll go over that uh, right here. So first, the basics, you can right-click on it and open as a floating window or back to a docked window. You can right-click anywhere within the tool to change that. You'll also notice that you can change now the size and shape of the window. So if you'd like it to be a horizontal toolbar, or vertical or anything in between, it'll now uh, resize and fit the content for you. If you don't like the new icons, you can right click and choose on use text mode and go back to the old school text mode with a few added features that are also brought in in version 2.5, but you have this simple old text mode if you still prefer. You'll also notice that you can scroll using uh, the scroll wheel on your mouse or touchpad or just use the arrows that will appear if needed to scroll the uh, to scroll the GUI. I'll change this back to the icon mode just for this tutorial and set it to a slim side toolbar which I usually prefer just to take up the least amount of space on the screen. Continuing with the toolbar you'll notice that there are now color-coded sections to the toolbar just to make it a bit easier to figure out for first-time users. So the top in orange are the tools panels. These are items like the UV panel, the materials palette, the shape creation panel, and other items that open up a separate tool panel. Below that are the selection tools, and below that the object editing tools. These are tools that will edit entire objects. And below that, finally, the geometry editing tools. These are items that will edit individual elements on the geometry. You'll also notice that the panel is smart and adaptive, so depending on your selection, for instance, if just one vertice is selected here, you only have actions available uh, that will affect a single vertice, a vertex, and if I select multiple, more actions will become available, and if I select a face, now we have the face options, and the same for edge. So as you're moving between modes, the toolbar is only showing everything that is currently possible and nothing that isn't. So it keeps it nice and clean and organized. The same is true for the selection options and also in object mode. It will only show object options if you are uh, able to apply them and have a actual ProBuilder object selected. Lastly on the toolbar, but probably the best addition as of version 2.5, is the new tooltips. So when you hover over an item, you now get these nice, very descriptive tooltips that will also tell you their uh, shortcut key. So if I hover over an item, it'll tell you this one, set pivot is control J, and the same for any others. So it's a quick way to learn exactly what any of the items in the toolbar do and their shortcut key just by hovering over it. You can also set this via the preferences, which you can reach via edit, preferences, and then Pro Builder. You can change it to only show while the shift key is held down. Which more advanced users might prefer, that way those tooltips are not popping up to get in your way, but only show up when you need it. So I can hover over an item I'm not sure of and hold shift, and only then the tooltip will pop up. And I can let go of shift and it disappears. Also within the toolbar, some items will show a plus button next to them. This means that this item or function has extra options that you can change by holding the Alt key and left clicking. So this will bring up options that you can set for that particular item. And once you have set the options, they become the default and will happen whenever you normally left click on it. For instance, with a face selected, if I Alt click on the Extrude button, 
I'm given options to extrude as group and the distance. Once I set these, they'll become the default and will always happen when I click directly on the button. This is also the same in the text mode. So if I right click and change this to text mode, make this a bit larger to fit. Now you'll have a little plus button. Again, the same for that extrude button next to the text for the button. And for now, I'll move this back to the icon mode just to keep demonstrating those. The next most important part of the ProBuilder GUI is the element and object selection tool section up top here. So this has four buttons on it. The first is object mode, and this will just allow you to edit the entire objects at once, just like it sounds in object mode. And then we have the element modes. So there's vertex, which allows you to select and edit the vertices on a ProBuilder object. Edge mode, which does the same for edges and faces. Again, just faces on the object. Whenever you are in any of these modes, you can left click directly to select that element. So the same here for vertices or edges, just left click to select. You can hold shift to select multiple or you can drag select. If you are in the vertex or edge modes, you can also click directly on a face to select all of the edge or vertex elements for that face. Just a handy shortcut. This will also work while holding shift. Of course, you can also remove items or elements from the selection by holding shift. For example, I select these three edges, then hold shift and left click on edges that I do not want to select and it removes them from the selection. Lastly, we have the element handles and luckily these are just the same as in Unity. In fact, we use the exact same ones already there. So you can use the rotate, move, and scale handles. And they'll all work just the same as working on objects in Unity, so nothing new to learn there. And that's it for the in-scene GUI and interface for ProBuilder as of version 2.5. There are also some extra advanced tools in the tools ProBuilder menu, which we'll look at in other tutorials and in the documentation, of course. And just to reiterate the edit preferences and then pro builder area there are a lot of neat items you can change in here everything from vertex colors and, and handle sizes uh, all the way down to many of the shortcut keys so go ahead and look through that so you can customize the experience to work best for you speaking of shortcut keys just a, another reminder there are shortcuts for almost every action within pro builder and it really speeds up the workflow to use those so we highly recommend just hold shift and look at few of these actions or all of them as you start using them start to learn those shortcut keys and you can really really work a lot more quickly with that as well as for the object and element you can hit G at any time to move in and out of geometry editing mode and H will toggle through the element modes so that's it for GUI and interface thanks for watching and we'll see you in the future tutorials